people. He's put us in the right fellowship. God knows what He's doing. He knows what He's doing. And so we're, we're working. We're connecting. We're, we're, and God's bringing supply and He's bringing resources to us. And remember I stepped out and I said, one thing I want is my, I want my leadership to be poured into. That's what I want. And that's my heart's desire for me to grow, but, but our leaders and our teams to grow too. Amen. And uh, so we're stepping out in faith and, and, and possibly got some people coming from a long ways away, put it that way. People that shouldn't even be coming to this building, but they're going to come here and we're believing God. We've already stepped out and uh, they're going to come and they're going to pour into our staff, pour into our leadership, pour into us. Amen. Amen. So I want to talk to you just for a moment. I want to talk to you. We've been talking about the laws. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do a, an offering and a tithe, and I'm going to try to stay in under just a, I'm going to try to do something different, okay? I'm just going to try to do, do it less than about 15 minutes. But I want to get this to you out of a story. And we've been talking about laws of faith. We've been talking about laws that govern. There's laws that govern the universe and all that. But I want to talk to you about an avenue of honor. Okay? And there's a lot of depth in this story. There's so much in here, so we're going to get into it right away. I'm going to pull this out, what, what the Holy Ghost is showing me, deliver it to you, and then we'll turn it over to her after we minister to the Lord tithe and offerings tonight. Like I said, if you have anything that you want to sow in to these brothers for their home, hey, reach out to us. If you got extra furniture, extra mattresses, anything like that, extra covers... Just anything like, a lot of people have a lot of stuff just stored up that's good stuff. Vacuum cleaners, I mean anything like that. You know, it ain't just got to be money. Amen? But those things can help, and that's what we do as a church family. God honors faith, and when we step out in faith, and God brings a supply. And He always will for you. So, I want to go to 1 Kings chapter 17 real quick, and I want to talk to you about this story here. But I want you to, to, to keep this thought here, the avenue of honor. The avenue of honor. First Kings chapter 17 verse 8. I'll give you just a second to get there and I'm going to read it pretty quick. It said, And the word of the Lord came unto, me, unto him, saying, Arise, and get thee, get thee to Zarephath, which belonged to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And this is Elijah. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks. And he called to her, or in verse 10, and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord God liveth, I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do it as thou hast said and make thee thereof a little cake and bring it unto me and after for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did as according to Elijah. So she obeyed, and she and he and her house, and did eat many days. So there's a lot of truth in this. Now I want to break it down. I want to, I want to bring out some points here real quick, because we're talking about honoring the anointing and the, 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 the avenue of honor. Okay. Now there's ways that you receive from God. And there's, as we grow in our Christian walk, we realize that there's, there's, way, there's ways that we... Let me say, let me, let, me, let me just stop right there for just a second. In verse 9, he said, Arise and get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there, for I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Okay? And he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow woman was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. So God had done spoke to the prophet. Now the prophet was anointed by God. This is the thing. Well, God spoke to him and showed him where to go. Now you've got to think, at this time there was a famine in this land. 
There was a lot going on in this land. Elijah, if you'll go up a little bit, he done cursed it. said the rain's not to, deli- to give all for nothing, and, he, and God sent him into this other land. And I want to show you an avenue here that if you'll obey these principles and you'll start to learn to honor the anointing and honor, listen to me, there's rewards for that, okay? As he said, it, there's seed time and harvest as long as the earth remains, okay? <clears throat> he said if you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. That's, that's scriptural, New Testament scripture. If you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. You show me a generous giver and I'll show you somebody that's overflowing with blessings. That's just how it goes. But this is a little deeper and a little different. You can get it wherever you can hear this at. You're going to receive from it. But this woman honored the man of God. And when he came, he, she, or it says in verse 11, and as she went to, to fetch it, so he said, give me something to drink and give me something to eat. And she, said, she was going to fetch the water. And he said to her, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. In verse 12 he said, and as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal and a barrel. This is all I have. You understand this? He's going to a widow woman in a time of famine. This man of God knows something. This man of God knows he has a revelation. He understands something. Or he wouldn't have said that because a lot of people would be like, why would you tell that woman to give you the last cake? And the man of God's like, she's going to eat it and die anyway. Why does she need it? I'm going to eat it and I'm going to keep on going. It wasn't like that though. See, he knew something. He knew something about spiritual law. He knew something about laws that govern. We're in this and God showed me this back there and he said, take them to this story and show them. There's an avenue there where she was going to receive from him. But he needed to get her over into some kind of faith and respond to that with something that she had. <clears throat> God had sent him there. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, and go and do as thou hast said. Even though you got one cake, man, just do as I said. Follow the commands, follow the instructions, and then bring it to me. So make me a cake first, bring it to me, and after that, for thee and thy son. She sowed all she had, which demanded a response from the anointing on Elijah. When we get this truth, I tell you, it'll change the way we look at people in our lives. It'll change the way that we that we perceive things. It'll change the way that we respond. God's never trying to just get something from you. He's always trying to get something to you. But He needs your faith and He needs the response with something natural and something that you can touch and hold. Why is that? Well, He said this. He was talking about in the New Testament, and this is what Paul said. He said, why shouldn't those that minister to you the word of God, why shouldn't they receive of the natural things that they have need of to accomplish what I've, you know, to to, to live? So why shouldn't they? But when you understand this truth, as, as, as Elijah did, okay, and he said, bring me what you have. I need what you have. Well, she gave him all she had. Now watch this. It wasn't to hurt her. But there was something going to happen there when she honored that and she brought that and she sowed it. She gave it to the man of God. He had need of food. She had need of a lot of other things. Now watch this, what all it brought. It didn't just bring financial increase, church. It didn't just bring that. When we get this, it will change the whole way that we look at things. Hope Carpenter said this, Proof of honor is adaptation. You can only access what you honor. I noticed this in my own life, and I'm going to tell you this as your pastor. I notice when I, and my wife notices it too, when I watch people, how they respond to me and how they perceive me, and I'm not walking around telling them, you got to call me pastor. You got to call, I don't do that. How you perceive me is, I can't change the way you perceive me. Amen. You can change that. I can't change that. I can't just make you say, hey, you're going to do this. I'm not going to do that to you. Okay? But what I am going to say is this. People that respond to me, people that call me pastor and they say it from the heart with faith, they call. I notice there's an anointing that is released to them. There's greater wisdom. There's greater... 
there's greater that's released to them because of the honor and the way that they perceive than somebody that just, you know, I have friends that just call me Derek. That's fine. That's my name, Derek. You can call me whatever you want, but they perceive me as that. They don't receive nothing else. And I know that because it don't come. <clears throat> Do you get that? That goes for any of us. But I notice people that do, and they say it in faith, I know there's a, greater, there's a greater release and a greater supply. The anointing comes from the head down, church. You got your own anointing. You're anointed. You're anointed. You got your own. But what I'm saying, there's a supply that comes down in the connection, and this is the way Jesus sets it up. So when we perceive that, and we respond the right way, there's a supply coming back to you. Not only financially, Sowing things financially. Yeah, there's an increase financially that will come to you. There's greater wisdom that can be released. There's greater, whatever you have need of, there's greater supply. Because what you, what, would you sow sparingly? You reap sparingly. You sow bountifully? You reap bountifully. But I'm taking you to a greater level right now. I'm taking you to a greater way of thinking right now. Okay? Trust me, I got men of God that's above me that I sow into their lot. We sow into their lot. We sow financially into their I honor them. I send them offerings. I, I honor them with my personal stuff because I honor what they have. I honor the people that God's put in my life. I'm not just there to suck it. I'm there to sow, but I'm there to gain something from it because I need it to equip me to fulfill God's purpose and plan in my life. When you get this, it's going to change your whole, the whole way you look at things. It's going to change your whole dynamic and your whole relationship with God. When you learn to honor the anointing. But I noticed that. I'm just using myself as, in that exa- I'm just using myself as an example there. I notice there's a difference when people respond to me and they call me pastor and they believe it and they know that I'm their pastor. And they honor that and they say, Pastor, there's something that's released out of me. God does that. And they get a supply because they perceive that. They perceive, so therefore they draw from that office. And you say, well, that don't sound scriptural. Well, Jesus couldn't even get some of them healed. Why? Because he was just the carpenter's son. That's David's son or, or, or Joseph's son. That's all he was. And that's all they got. That's why he told Peter, he said, who do you say that I am? Well, who do they say? Well, they say this. They say, well, who do you say? You're the Christ. You're the Messiah. Now you can receive something. Now watch this. Honoring the anointing. She sold all that she had, which demanded, listen, it demanded a response from the anointing on Elijah. It demanded a response. Everybody in the region was in famine. And I'm fixing to take you right here to another place. Everybody in this region was in famine, but this widow had an opportunity. That's why the man of God needed to get something from her, a response. He knew the laws. He knew what would happen. He knew what was on him. He understood that. He wasn't trying to get something from her. He was trying to get something to her. But he needed to get her over into faith and respond with something that she had. Well, she gave all she had in faith. She laid that cake down. If she didn't, she would have went in there and ate it and said, no, I'm not giving him nothing. I don't know anything. And she wouldn't have got a thing, I bet you. But she brought it. She believed him. She obeyed the response. She obeyed the word. She responded and she received from that anointing. Now watch. So when she sowed, all she had, it demanded a response from Elijah. And you say all she had was a cake. That was all she had. That widow, that woman that put the, put the two mites in there, Jesus said she gave more than all of y'all put together. You know Maybe not put together, but she said, all of y'all, you gave from your substance. She gave all that she had. Trust in God. If God didn't come through, it didn't happen. Now what's this? What you sow into, you reap from. What you don't sow into, you don't reap from. She received financial increase and supply like this. I'm going to use somebody else's word here, but I'm going to give him credit to Bumper crop. And she received it immediately. A bumper crop. Somebody else said that. I didn't get that from the Holy Ghost. I'm just saying the man of God said that. But it was good and it was good and it went right here. She received it immediately. It wasn't a wait. She received it right then. Financial increase for one. 
She received financial increase and supply. It says right here, the barrel, in verse 16, the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which, the, which he spake by Elijah. And it came to pass that these things, that the son of the woman, the mistress of the, fell sick. Now watch this. So in verse 16, it says, the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail. Church, listen, she sold all that she had. She gave all that she had to the prophet. And the anointing that was on him because God had anointed him demanded a response. It demanded a return in a supply. That's the way God set it up. God did this. We didn't do this. He set this up this way. She obeyed the instruction. She gave all she had and it gave an immediate increase. The cruise of oil never ran out. Her barrel never ran out of food, so through the whole famine they ate. Now watch. It didn't stop there. If you go on through there, they fell sick. i got just a few more minutes. They fell sick. Elijah said, What do we do, O man of God? Art thou come to, to bring my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said to her, Give me your son. So apparently she received forgiveness of sins because he said, Did you bring, come to bring my sin back to me and kill me? You know, what did what'd you come, you know? So apparently her sin got, you know, pushed back. And he said unto her, Give me your son. He took her in the bosom, carried her into the loft where he bowed, laid him on his own bed, and he cried out to the Lord and said, Oh my God, thou hast brought evil upon the widow. And then it goes on, he stretched himself out, and the child's soul came back into him in that moment. The child's soul had left him. The spirit had left that young child, but he took him in there because of the anointing on him, and he laid on him, and the soul came back into the child. So not only did they reap a financial harvest, did she reap it and ate during the whole, during the whole famine? But she received a miracle and the son got raised back from the dead. Now I want to go one other place here real quick. Luke chapter 4, watch this. This is why they hated Jesus right here. Luke chapter 4, verse 23, 26. In verse 23, he said, and he said unto them, he will sure... You will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in the country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. Verse 25, But I tell you of the truth, Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land. Now verse 26 is what I want to get to you. Jesus was bringing to remembrance that story. Watch this. But unto none of them was Elias sent. Save unto Sarapta, a city of Sidon, unto the woman that was a widow. And the Amplified, he'll, he'll, he'll let you know, and Elijah was not sent to a single one of them but to Zarephath in the country of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. So he was not sent to not one of them except that widow right there. But when he came into the midst, when she, when she came into the presence of the right place at the right anointing, she learned to respond to it. Therefore she received from it. Are you getting that? Now watch this. And many lepers were in Israel and he went telling Elijah the prophet but none of them cleansed save Naaman the Syrian. If you remember Naaman the Syrian. He obeyed, he obeyed finally what the prophet said. And they all in the synagogue, listen to this, in verse 28, and they all in the synagogue when they heard these things were filled with what? They were filled with wrath. They always wanted to kill Jesus but they wanted to kill him for what he said not what he did. Because that sound that don't sound right, but that's Jesus. That's our Messiah. You understand that? And he was he told them. He said, well, the, the, "You know, the prophet wasn't sent to none except her." And boy, they hated that. But that was the truth. So anyway, we're talking about honoring the anointing. Honor is an avenue that you can receive. Okay, when you honor people, when you honor the anointing, when you honor your men and women of God, when you honor each other, that's the avenue. That is one avenue that you can receive. From that. Amen. Honor your brother. Honor the brotherhood. Honor all men. Amen. But we want to give you a chance to respond. Uh, I just wanted to give you some meat there. Because we, we minister on a lot of other stuff. But, but I felt the Lord's heart right there to say. He's taking us deeper. Say we're going deeper. We're going deeper. To go deeper there's going to be a greater challenge for you guys. There's going to be greater responses. There's going to be greater sacrifices. 
There just is. For you to go deeper in God, there's going to be challenges. There's going to be things that God's going to move on you to do that's going to be like, oh God, I don't know if I can do that. But that's... It depends what you want more. Do you want more of Him or, or what? You know? So God's preparing us and He's taking us somewhere, church. Amen. And I need all I can get. I don't know about you. So we're going to give you a chance to, if you haven't tithed, tithe offerings, obey God with that. Uh, if you need an envelope for your giving, let us know and Gary will bring it to you. Amen. I want to share this with you. I, I appreciate you all. Listen, you all are generous. You all are generous givers. You are generous sowers. You all are. And there's a supply for you. And there's a supply coming to you. Just because you don't see it in a moment sometimes, I promise you it's coming in return to you. Good measure pressed down, shaken together, cup running over. He said it would come back to you. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Oh, yeah. And if you need text to give, we've got a number, 931-209-9561. If you have... <coughs> what? 201 Nine five six one. That's what I said, didn't I? Two oh two oh one. Okay, don't don't text my number. Two oh two oh one nine five six one. Get us some music.